Are you looking to diversify your portfolio? As an investor, diversification is essential to your investments as they help mitigate potential risks, which is why many investors will try other types of investments. One of the best ways to diversify your investment portfolio is to invest in international stocks. If you've never tried it before, this is a great time for you to start trying them now. And with that in mind, we'll guide you through things that you need to know and remember when investing in foreign stocks. So without further ado, let's start learning. Hey, welcome to Stock Market Mate. Today we'll talk about the things you need to know about international investing. Before we get into it, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to help us beat the YouTube algorithm. If you're done with that, then let's get right into it. Many investors consider international investing for two reasons, either to diversify their portfolio or for growth in certain foreign economies, or emerging markets in particular. But before we dive into the perks of foreign stocks investing, let's get to know a little bit about what it is and how it works. What are foreign stocks? Foreign stocks are those issued by an organization based outside the US. Foreign stocks are listed on many different stock exchanges across the globe, including the United States as American depository receipts. When investing in international stocks, it usually involves putting together geographically diversified portfolios of international investments. Besides broadening an investor's diversification, it also adds new sources of return. Furthermore, because international markets do not always rise and fall at the same time as the domestic market, owning securities in both markets can help level out a portfolio's volatility. Having international investments can spread out the risks of your portfolio more than just domestic investments. Another reason to invest in international stocks is that countries usually differ a lot in their competence when it comes to different industries. Hence, if you want further exposure to different sectors as well as business, you'll most likely need to consider international investments. Mutual funds and exchange-traded funds are most often the easiest way to invest overseas. The benefits of investing in funds go beyond diversification, because it's generally cheaper and easier since you don't have to contend with the costs and timing considerations involved in trading on international exchanges and affiliating with American depository receipts. Types of International Market Moving on, let's now discuss the two types of international market. Emerging Markets Emerging markets have less stable economies and developing capital markets. Nevertheless, they are thought to be in the process of transitioning into developed markets and they may be exhibiting rapid growth. These include Egypt, China, South Africa, etc. Developed Markets Developed markets, on the other hand, are countries with highly developed industries, good infrastructure, and high living standards. These include Australia, Canada, Japan, and the UK. Risks of international investing Of course, international investing is not without any risks. There are many things that could go wrong when you're investing internationally, which is why you need to be acquainted with the possible bumps in the road. Furthermore, here are a few significant risks that are important to take note of. Foreign Loss In case you're met with problems in your investment, there may be little help you can expect, as you may not be able to do much, like sue. It may just depend on the laws of a specific country. However, if you do successfully sue in a US court, you may not be able to collect a US judgment against a non-US company. Less Information Foreign companies do not provide investors with the same level of information as US-based companies, and they may not provide English language information as well. Lack of Liquidity There may be fewer listed companies and lower trading volumes in foreign markets. Trading may only be available a few hours every day. Furthermore, certain countries restrict how much or what type of stocks can be purchased by foreign investors. Political, Economic, and Social Events As an investor, it is difficult to take into account all the political, economic, and social factors that influence markets, especially foreign markets. Changes in Currency Exchange Rates Depending on how the exchange rate changes between the US dollar and the currency of an international investment, the investment return can increase or decrease. How to Invest Internationally now we're ready to proceed in how to start investing in international stocks. In this part, we're going to walk you through ways you can choose to invest internationally. Here are most of the things you need to know. Trading on foreign markets. In this way, your broker may be able to help you process an order if you wish to buy or sell stock in an international company. Companies like these do not file reports with the SEC, so you'll need to gather information from other sources. Also, don't forget to verify that any broker you work with is registered with the SEC. Unregistered brokers outside of the US who call you and solicit your investment are breaking the law. International Index Funds These track the performance of an international market index you're interested in. A difference between an index fund and a managed fund comes from the research the managers do on the companies in the fund. Regional or Country Funds Focus on companies located in a particular geographic region, such as Asia or Europe, or in a single country. Some funds only invest in emerging markets, while others do both developed market and emerging markets. International Funds these are generally limited to companies outside of the United States. Global Funds These invest in companies outside of the country as well as invest in companies within the country with international operations. Mutual Funds Mutual funds are another way to invest internationally. They provide diversification more than one investor could ever do. 
currency conversions will be handled by the fund, which will also pay foreign taxes and understand the different operations of non-US markets. Foreign investments can be made through a variety of different funds. American Depository Receipts or ADRs US depository banks issue a form of American Depository Receipt on behalf of companies that trade in the US markets. If you own an ADR, you have the right to purchase the stock it represents, but American investors usually prefer to own the ADR. As a result, the price of an ADR will be the same as the stock price in the company's home market, adjusted based on the ratio of ADRs to shares. International Investing Alternatives If you find yourself uninterested in the idea of international investing, however, whether it's very specific risks or perhaps you just think it's a little too complicated for you and you feel like you're not ready for that kind of investment yet, here are some alternatives that you can turn to that can just as much as diversify your portfolio and give it some exposure to international businesses as international stocks can. There are actually instances where some of the foreign stocks are listed in domestic exchange. For example, we have ENB and BABA. These are New York Stock Exchange traded tickers for Enbridge and Alibaba. Enbridge is a Canadian company, while Alibaba is a Chinese company. For the case of Enbridge, this company cross-lists its shares. A cross-listing is when a company's shares are listed on another exchange than its primary and original one. In order to qualify for cross-listing, the company in question must meet the same accounting policies requirements as any other listed company in the exchange. A cross-listed company can have the advantage of flexibility on buying stocks in two different currencies, in this case, American and Canadian dollars. Meanwhile, BABA is an ADR or an American Depository Receipt. An American Depository Receipt or an ADR is a certificate issued by a US bank representing shares in a foreign company listed on a US stock exchange. This is technically different from cross-listing, but at the same time, they're kind of similar. So to put in perspective, when purchasing BABA, you won't be buying a common share, but instead, you'll be buying a certificate for shares of the Hong Kong listed ticker 9988. Moreover, another alternative to international investing is by investing in domestic funds which hold foreign positions. Lastly, you can also try gaining international exposure through domestic tickers. There are a great number of companies that operate internationally. This means you can have the option to put your money into companies that generate profits from other countries. Those are some of the things you need to know if you're thinking about starting international investing. Although international investing is sort of risky and complicated, it's actually pretty beneficial for those who have them in their portfolio. So just keep an open mind about it. At the same time, stay cautious in your decisions and always remember to do your own research when it comes to picking your investments. That's about it for today. If you found this video helpful, kindly click the like and subscribe button. Also, you might want to leave a comment below. We love hearing from you. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, you're going to want to watch one of these two videos right here. Enjoy!